In this video, we're going to talk about complex numbers. But before we get to complex numbers, let's talk about an imaginary unit. An imaginary unit is a number that can be squared to obtain a negative number. So x squared equal to negative 1 would result in an imaginary unit. Now, let's talk about the imaginary unit i. i is equal to the square root of negative 1. And if I square both sides here, I get the second part of the definition. i squared is equal to negative 1. So now that we have defined an imaginary unit i, we can now define a complex number. And that is a number of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, and i is equal to the square root of negative 1. a is the real part, and b is the imaginary part. So examples of complex numbers. 3 plus 14i is a complex number, where 3 is the real part, and 14 is the imaginary part. 7i, which we can also write as 0 plus 7i, is a complex number where 0 is the real part and 7 is the imaginary part. And 7i is an example of a purely imaginary number since 0 is the real part. 5, which can be rewritten as 5 plus 0i, is also a complex number where 5 is the real part and 0 is the imaginary part. So 5 is an example of a purely real number since 0 is the imaginary part. So we also can tell you now that all real numbers are complex numbers. Now the I cannot say that com, all complex numbers are real numbers since 7i is a complex number but not a real number. All right, so I want to write these expressions in terms of i. So the square root of negative 25. Well, I can rewrite that as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25. Now, the square root of 25 is 5. We now know that the square root of negative 1 is i. So the square root of negative 25 is equal to 5i. All right, let's take a look at the next example. Again, I'm going to rewrite the square root of negative 72 as this. Now, I want to be able to pull out all the perfect roots of 72. Doing that, we have 6 times the square root of 2. And again, we know the square root of negative 1 is i, so I can write it like this. Now, you can also rewrite it as 6i times the square root of 2. I would accept either one of those answers. All right, let's take a look at the next example. With the square root of 27, there will not be an i I will be able to pull out because the number under the radical is positive. But you know I'm going to pull out an imaginary unit i for this because the number under the square root is negative. So let's pull out all the perfect roots. Okay, so we've done that. So now the square root of 27 is 3 times the square root of 3. And the square root of negative 20 will be 2 times the square root of 5 times i. Remember, the i does not go inside the square root. These are not like radicals. We're done here. All right, let's take a look at the next example then. So the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to pull out the perfect roots of the square root of negative 50. As a reminder, I cannot divide out a 5 from 15 and 5. It's got to be from every single term. So when I pull out the perfect roots of negative 50, I get this. 5 times the square root of 2 times i. So let's write. Now, every single one of these terms I can divide out of 5, but I'll show this by separating the terms. Fifteen divided by 5, that is 3. 5 divided by 5 is 1, so I'm left with a square root of 2 times i. So now I want to talk about the power of i. 
Well, we know that i to the first is i, and we know i squared is equal to negative one, thanks to our two definitions. So i cubed is i squared times i, well, i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times i, that's negative 1. Or negative i, excuse me. i to the 4th, that's i squared times i squared. That's negative 1 times negative 1, that's 1. i to the 5th, i to the 4th times i. That's 1 times i, that's i. i to the 6th i to the fourth times i squared, that's one times negative one, that's negative one. i to the seventh, that's i to the fourth times i cubed, that's one times negative i, that's negative i. And i to the eighth is i to the fourth times i to the fourth, one times one is one. So again, we should be able to see a pattern for this, but I'm gonna write out the first eight answers now. So it has a pattern of i, negative 1, negative i, and 1, and continues that pattern. Well, the nice part here is that i to the fourth is equal to 1. So I want to be able to divide out as many i to the fourth as possible, because I know i to the fourth is equal to 1. Okay, so let's simplify. So i to the 26th. So I want to ask myself, how many i to the fourth can I take out of i to the 26th? Well, that's 6, so I'm going to rewrite it as i to the 4th taken to the 6th power times i squared. 4 times 6 is 24, plus 2 is 26. Well, again, i to the 4th is 1. That's to the 6th. i squared is negative 1. 1 to the 6th is 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So notice what my solution is. It's negative 1. Well, what do you notice about i squared? i squared is also equal to negative 1. So whatever my remainder is going to be, I'll put that with i to that particular power, and that's what my answer is going to be. Let's try this with i to the 43rd. So 43 divided by 4, that's 10 with a remainder of 3. What does that mean? i to the 43rd. That's the same thing. Well, the remainder is 3. So I'm going to take i to that power, which is 3. Now, let's go back. i cubed is equal to negative i. That means also i to the 43rd is equal to negative i.